Hello, my name is Alex Viedra. My name is Jimmy Vargas. I'm Jackson Paisley. And for our project two, we designed a gearbox that would operate within a motor to power a, um, a propeller on a boat. Our motor, uh, our gearbox, I'm sorry, had to uh, sustain an input of 1320 RPMs and then thus the output a resulting 60 RPMs on the output shaft. It had to sustain a horsepower of two without the entire system, and the input and output shafts had to be um, parallel or collinear. The operation temperature also wasn't a big factor. It only had to sustain room temperatures. Um, a, like I said before, the, our input is 1320 down to 60. As our output, so we have a gearbox uh, reducer. And so initially in our system, we're going to have higher RPMs, and then towards the output side, we're going to have lower RPMs, but thusly higher torque. So that's something we have to account for in our system um, and the strength of the gears later on. Uh, an application of these types of gearboxes can be something seen in conveyor belts, electric motors, and multi-spindle drives. And like we said, our, our initial application or general application as a, a gearbox for a boat propeller. So this slide represents some of the designs or iterations for the gearboxes we've come up with while designing our final one. Um, this picture here represents the first one we had, and it just has four gears with two main steps, uh, reducing steps. Um, so here we have a 1320 input uh, RPM, and our, at the end we have our output of 60 RPM. Um, on this shaft we have a 30, 330 RPMs, and so it's equal on this shaft, and our Diametral pitch is 12. We started off initially with a 14 and a half uh, face, uh, I'm sorry, pressure angle. And we realized later on that that's not really a uh, typical uh, pressure angle to use as it's outclassed by the 20 degree pressure angle, which is something that we, we use in our second design. But we ended up uh, concluding that this design wasn't very uh, applicable or just uh, ideal for our situation because it the gear sizes were just so large. And although volume wasn't a, a parameter shown earlier, it was something that was targeted to be minimal in our final gearbox design. And so in our second rate of iteration, although there are more gears, there's a total of, of eight gears with six reduction steps, uh, all the gears are generally smaller. So we have a total minimal, um, a total smaller volume as a result. And in our final gearbox design, we ended up actually coming back to more of a system representing this, this iteration. But to compensate for the higher torque values, we just generally increase the size of it. So although the, the value is larger than both of our iterations, it has a, a much higher capability of holding withstanding higher stresses. So as Alex said, we went back to um, two stages. So as can be seen, um, uh, we needed a, a larger gear. So we used for our pinion 28 teeth and for our gears 132 teeth. So um, it's large enough to withstand torques. As can be seen here, um, the RPM decrease as, uh, as we go from the first stage to the second stage. Um, and here are the materials that we use for our pinion and our gears. Uh, for both of our pinions, we use a uh, carburized hardened grade one steel, and for our gears, we use a grade cast iron. Um, uh, all the gears that we used in our design um, were <coughs> tested against the AGMA standards. AGMA um, means American Gear Manufacturing Association. So um, we tested our gears for uh, gear bending and gear wear. We had um, a minimum, we decided to um, design our gears to have a minimum of two uh, for safety factor. And as can be seen for both the gear bending and the gear wear, um, our gears are equivalent to two or higher. So um, our design is, uh, is safe. For the casing supporting system, we wanted to choose a case that would adequately support our intended use case. So as Alex said before, we are hoping to use this um, gearbox for, excuse me, for a boat propeller. 
Uh, boat propellers are kind of interesting because they need very high torque uh, because there's a lot of friction from the water, but they don't really need to spin that fast because they have very high displacement, which is a perfect fit for our uh, gearbox use case. So we ended up using a aluminum casing with uh, three stainless steel shafts that were 3.25 inches long. Each was a outer diameter of one inch. Um, they were cut from a single 12 inch um, steel shaft. Uh, as you can see, we have four bearings, or four different types of bearings, um, with the different speeds that each one is subjected to from the shafts that are rotating, and the pound force um, loads that are acting on them as well. We also have our desired life in hours for each bearing, or for the system in total, and our C10 rating for all of the bearings. As you can see in our, in our render over here, we have a cut view of our casing where it's been cut in half so that you can see the internals. We have our input pinion with our input shaft, which then couples to our first reduction stage with our first gear. And then the first gear is fixed to the second coupling shaft here, which attaches to the second pinion, which then has our second uh, gear reduction into our last gear there that you can see. In this image, we've removed the gear so that you can better see how the bearings and the shafts line up. So we have our first shaft here, our coupling shaft, and then our output shaft here. And all of the bearings are press fit into the casing. We have a lot of empty space here and on this side, and that's so that we can route uh, coolant or lubricant channels and then also mounting points for our gearbox. Because our gearbox has to operate in salt water if it's going to be used on a boat, it's very important that there's adequate lubricant so that the salt water doesn't damage our gears in the gearbox. And this is a brief animation of our gearbox spinning. It starts off at a very high RPM and slows down so that you can more easily see the difference in the speed between the gears. Our input gear is spinning extremely fast and you can see the difference between the uh, second and the output gear in RPM as it slows down, which is the total 22 to one reduction. Um, so we decided to do a cost analysis for our design. We used eight ball bearings. Uh, we used one shaft and we used um, four different gears. Uh, for our bearings, we used the Simkin uh, bearing catalog. For our shaft, we went to Skinny Metals uh, online. And for um, our gears, we went to the Boston gear catalog. So our overall, our overall cost was 353 um, in total. So for our, for our final iteration, our final design, we had a total value of 920 cubic inches with our casing. And so as I said previously, although that is high, we have a minimum safety factor of two without that, that system. And our inputs and output shafts have a zero offset, which makes it more practical in use. And again, it, it is very large, but it meets all of our requirements. For future analysis or iterations of our gearbox design, we, uh, we have three main uh, routes we, we decided we could take. The first being helical gears, uh, mostly because they would be able to, to sustain higher stresses, which would allow us to reduce the sizes of the gears, especially the ones later on in the system with higher force. Um, initially, we didn't use these because of their higher cost, but now that we realize the, the size of our, our gearbox, we figure that that's something we could uh, we could account for and just increase the cost of our system now. Our second idea would be to possibly implement a worm gear system, although that would be unlikely. Um, although they are generally useful for speed reduction, they are going to cause a difference in our, in our inputs and outputs shafts, or at least cause a change in the axis of rotation somewhere in our system. So that's, and that's not ideal for us, at least because of our, we want to have that parallel input and output shafts. Um, and they also aren't as efficient as for helical gears might be. For our third idea, and the most likely one to be able to pursue, um, would be the use of a planetary gear system, because they're just capable of large gear ratios within a very small uh, value, total value. The only real downside to them is their increased complexity, and the, they're, they require more lubrication and higher maintenance um, to, to be able to sustain that. And so that's about our presentation. Uh, thank you very much.